Hey, math students. Um, so one of my uh, GED students that I know from Facebook, Miss Betty, sent me a typical GED style word problem. So I wanted to uh, work this for everybody here. Um, let's take a look. It says a certain grain silo is cylindrical. Its diameter is 25 feet and its height is 57 feet. Find the surface area of the silo to the nearest square foot. So they told me to find the surface area. Now here's the nice thing. Um, the GED formula sheet is a very valuable asset to us for all the GED geometry problems, just about all of them. Um, but for sure, it's got area, perimeter, surface area, volume. You see those phrases at all, head straight to your formula sheet. So um, I've got two tools at my side right now to solve this problem. I've got my TI30XS um, GED calculator, and I've got my GED formula sheet. And if you don't have that formula sheet, just go ahead and Google it. If you Google GED formula sheet, it'll be the first thing that comes up and you can print it off. You've got to be used to using that for the GED. Okay, so before we move on, um, I'd really like to draw a picture here uh, so we can look at what's going on here. So we said this grain silo is cylindrical. It's cylindrical. What does that mean? It means it's shaped like a cylinder. Oh, my cylinder is ugly. If you're a geometry teacher, you're supposed to be able to draw, um, but apparently it's not in my wheelhouse. Okay, so here's my cylindrical um, grain silo, and it says its diameter is 25 feet. Do you guys know what a diameter is? A diameter is uh, uh, what you the length you would get if you measured from end to end across a circle and you might say Kate that's not a circle it's a cylinder no but remember that even though it looks distorted in my picture the two ends of a cylinder are both circles okay so I have this diameter here of 25 feet end to end on that circle across um, uh, through the center I should say and now I know one more thing its height is 57 feet so this cylinder is 57 feet tall. Now, they've asked me to find the surface area of the silo to the nearest square foot. So I'm gonna hit up my GED formula sheet and you're gonna notice about mm, a third of the way down the page, we see this section starting that says surface area and volume. And um, which one of those ones do I need? Well, I said this was shaped like a cylinder, it's cylindrical. So I'm gonna go down to the, surf the cylinder portion of that and I'm going to pick up the surface area formula. The surface area formula is going to start with SA. So surface area is equal to 2, and that little guy is called pi, the two little legs with the curly hat, RH plus, and again I don't have this memorized. I have a lot of formulas memorized but not this particular one. I mean I could um, derive it because I'm a math teacher I know where it comes from but I don't have to they gave it to me on the formula sheet so um, so same thing to you okay so I write down my formula first step now what I'm gonna want to do here is I am going to want to plug what I know into my formula so let's take a look do I know my surface area well look back at your problem it says find the surface area the surface area is the mystery, the unknown, the thing I don't know. In algebra class, when you don't know something, you call it by a, a variable or a letter. So I'm just going to leave it as surface area. Now I have my equals and I have my two. But pi is something that I do know. Pi is a number. Now it's an irrational number, meaning its decimal form goes on and on. But you can feel free to use that um, a rounded approximation of pi 3.14. And if you say, well, where is she getting that number? It is printed on your formula sheet as well. Look at the end of that surface area um, um, uh, portion of the uh, formula sheet, and you'll see um, it says right at the bottom under the line, pi is approximately equal to 3.14. Okay, so I just said we'll call pi 3.14. And notice how I put it in with parentheses, because those two things are shoving together, shoved together up there, the 2 and the pi, they are multiplying. Okay, um, now R. R stands for radius when I'm looking at circles. Now, you might say to me, Kate, I don't know what the radius is because the radius uh, starts at the center of a circle and goes to the outside. They didn't give me the radius here. What is, a lot of students do is they go, okay, I'll just use the diameter instead, but be careful. The diameter is not the same as the radius, but they are 
related. Take a look at this. We had said that the diameter goes all the way across the circle, but the radius only goes from the center to the outside. So if you look at that, it would be a radius here, there would be a radius there. There's two radiuses inside the diameter, or another way to think of it is a radius is half the diameter. A radius is half the diameter. So I know that all the way across my circle, my diameter is 25. If I wanted to find my radius from that, I would just need to half my 25. Easy, quick way to half 25 is divide it into two equal pieces. So I'm going to take 25 and divide by 2. And I get 12.5. 12.5. So that's the unknown radius that I need to know. And that was really the biggest trick to this problem. Plug my 12.5 in for my R. Next thing, I need my H. Next thing in the formula was an H, so I need an H. They were explicit to me. They did tell me the height is 57. So I'll plug in a 57 for my H. And I'm just looking at my formula above. The next thing here was a plus, so I'll put a plus. Then there was a 2, so I'll put a 2. Then there was a pi. And so we said that you could feel free to use the decimal approximation of pi, since this is a word problem and I'm rounding anyway. So I used 3.14 for pi. And now I want r squared. And we had said that our radius was 12.5. And I'm going to need to square that. Awesome. Now, I want to point out something really cool to you. This problem might look really nasty to you, but take a look at this. Look at this entire right-hand side of this equation. Do you see how there's no more variables left? There are no letters. It's all numbers now. The second you have an expression that's all numbers, your calculator can handle it. And I am going to literally type in this entire thing into my TI. 30 excess calculator. So I'm going to type 2 and then I'm going to open up a parenthesis and type 3.14 and close the parentheses. Open up another parenthesis, type 12.5, close the parentheses. Open up another parenthesis, 57, close the parentheses. Plus 2, open parentheses, 3.14, close parentheses. Open parentheses, 12.5, close parentheses. And now I need the square button, and that's perhaps the only one that's not intuitive on this calculator. To get a square in a TI-30XS, one way you can do it is by pressing the X squared button. So I'll press the X squared button. And if I have the entire expression in there that way, your calculator can do the order of operations for you. How fabulous. So I press Enter here, and I get 5,455.72. And that is my surface area. Now careful, even though my work's all right, even though this is all true information, if I were to just stop right here on the GED, I would actually get marked wrong. Why? Because there were directions I have not yet uh, followed. Take a look at these directions here. They had asked me to find the surface area of the silo to the nearest square foot. Do you see that language? To the nearest? That's rounding language. We always round as our very last step so that we don't lose any information along the way. So I'm going to round now. My problem appears to be solved, but it still needs to be rounded to the nearest square foot. So you might be saying, what place is that, the nearest square foot? Well, when they just say the nearest unit, like the nearest square foot or the nearest inch or the nearest dollar or the nearest um, to the nearest, I don't know, it could be pumpkin, it could be any just reg unit, um, and they don't specify a place value, assume that they want you to go to the ones place. The only exception I can think of to that rule is to the nearest cent, because you and I know cents have two decimals. But besides that, if they say to the nearest unit, you're going to chop it off right at the decimal place there. Okay, now remember, you can't just lose a piece or a portion of a number without asking yourself, was it big enough to make a difference? So consider the first number you're about to throw away, the 7, and ask yourself, was I halfway there yet? Am I halfway through my digits? Well, you and I know our digit system goes from 0 to 9, so the halfway point would be 5. So am I 5 or higher? I sure am. And so I'm going to have to round up this number um, 5 here because it turns out, as it turns out, I was closer to 6 than I was to 5. And so that'll be that number's final act before it dies, as I think of it. And I get 5,456 uh, square feet. 
Notice um, I just wrote square feet like that because I'm too lazy to spell the word square. Okay, guys, this is not some new math to do. This is just me abbreviating square feet as a math major usually does. And whew, long video because I probably over explained, but that is how you find the surface area of a cylinder. So right on. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments.